reinventing yourself. It's all about starting new patterns. And I have here nine timeless secrets to help you come out of a pandemic rut, feel free to retire, and fire your job. That's what's in this book. Yes, that's what I said. Nine timeless secrets. And we're going to go into that. I won't finish all of them. Uh, I will start some, but in order to get the rest, you're going to have to purchase the book. You can purchase the book on Amazon or on my website, Minute Just Have Faith. All right, let's get to it, y'all. It's not about reinventing yourself. It's all about starting new patterns. How did I come up with this book? I was out on the circuit talking and, and teaching. Uh, it's it's, it's uh, reinvent yourself. Reinvent yourself. That's what I was teaching people, to reinvent themselves. And one day, um, it came to me, and I'm sure it was Holy Spirit, because I've been reinventing myself a whole lot, you guys, over the years. But I was doing the same things while reinventing myself. I go into this, I go into that, but I still had the same habits, the same patterns. And so one day I was standing and I just heard so sweet in my spirit. It's not about reinventing yourself. It's about starting new patterns. It was reinvented. It's reinventing yourself and starting new things is what I was teaching people. This is the deal. If you have the same habits, the same patterns, you're going to do the same thing. You might start a new job. You might start something, a, a new business. You may start dressing differently. You might start doing all kinds of different things. But if you have the same patterns, you are going to do that thing the same way. And then you're wondering why, wow, year after year after year after year, I have the same thing going on. Nothing is moving. The needle is not moving. My life is not moving. Nothing is changing. I did, I'm doing something new, but it's still, I'm still getting the same results. Well, it's all about starting new patterns. But first you have to know what patterns you operate in what habits you have. Do you even know the habits that you have? I mean daily, in your daily life, what type of habits do you operate in? Have you thought about that? Do you even think about that? Because I guarantee you, if you start something new with the same habits, you're gonna get the same results. So in this book, first thing I, I offer to you, I share with you, and there's no one thing that fit everybody. But basically, that basic thing is habits, right? And so the first thing you need to do is empty your carry-on bags. Empty your carry-on bags. And I know some people are like, empty my carry-on bags. Yes, what are you carrying around with you year after year? Day after day, what are you carrying with you? I have this urgent note in every chapter of this book. One of them is always first put on your oxygen mask. One of our habits, especially people in ministry, is we don't put on our oxygen mask first. We're out there trying to help this person, help this organization, help the homeless, help the this, help everybody. 
everybody y'all and you haven't helped yourself that's not a good habit to have you're trying to start organizations I want to I want to just help the world you know just clean up the whole universe just we're out here trying to do everything and you have not taken care of yourself so we have things in our carry-on bag that we're dragging around with us but yet we're trying to drag other people out of their situations. You still have that imposter syndrome in your carry-on bag. You still have hurt in your life from when you were three, four years old. And then somebody had to tell you what happened to you when you was three and you didn't remember, but they told you, now you got that going on. That's in your carry-on bag. Some of you have had relationships that just went south. Woohoo! Cray cray man, cray cray woman. Crazy, that's what I meant by that, you guys. But you you had a relationship with somebody that just wreaked havoc in your mind, wreaked havoc in your life. You still have that carrying on. You go to the next relationship. You can't have a relationship with the new one because you still have that same thing in your carry-on bag about the old one. Now you have messed up the new relationship because you carry the old relationship right along with you. Empty those carry-on bags so that you can move forward. The other thing in our carry-on bags is, you remember, one of my nine times the secrets is this is about the pandemic rut, too. Yes, this is a whole nother, what, three, four years after the pandemic. But some of you are still carrying the results from the pandemic still have it in your carry-on bag and you cannot even enjoy relationships anymore because you're scared of people. You're still scared. Oh, I can't go. I can't go. It's more than 10 people going to be there. Oh my God, I can't get it. I might get it. I might get something. Don't even know what you're going to get, but you decided in your mind, in your carry-on bag, that thing was a bad thing. It shut the world down. I don't want to deal with that anymore. And so you have stopped relationships with other people. But that's what you're doing. That's what you're doing. So you're still carrying on the effects of that. Companies are still carrying on the effects from the pandemic. You know how I know? Because you you can't probably get anybody on the phone anymore if you need help. Are you experiencing that? I have. Still am. Everything is robotic. And a robot cannot be personal with the person. The companies that are thriving now are companies that actually have someone that can talk to people. And so we still carrying on the drum, carrying on that drum. We have got to learn to empty our carry on bags. All right, and I, by those patterns that you have and those habits, you have that won't allow you to move forward. I find it in Jesus' name. Anything that's in heaven, that's found in heaven and loosed in heaven is lawful. Anything that's not in heaven or loosed in heaven is not lawful. So I find those illegal things that's captured you in your life, the strongholds in your life. I just had to stop and buy that thing. Empty your carry-on bags. We have people that Folks have told, and I had a guest earlier uh, uh, this month, uh, last week I believe it was, and we talked about identity. Uh, and we have this thing where we, we carry in our carry-on bag what everybody has said about us, what, who, what this one said about us, and you play games really good, but you you are a silly. And by the way, stop calling your children silly and calling them names that don't belong to them. But I have to go right now, but I'll be right back with you. And um, you stay right there. In a world that demands your silence, where does your voice find its power? This May 9 through 12, unleash your potential at the Soar Out Loud Content Creator Summit. Hosted by Minister Sister Soldier with special guest, Apostle Fanny Minute. It's a call to action for women ready to transform vision into reality. Join us for a transformative journey of inspiration, 
networking, and empowerment. Hey, if you just join me, I'm Faith Manager, Faith and Inspiration, the lady, and we are talking about my lady's book. It's not about reinventing yourself. It's all about starting new patterns. Right. Let's identify some of the things you carry on year after year, and for some, a lifetime, hindering or slowing down your visions and your dreams. You heard me, hindering or slowing down your visions or your dreams. Do you know how many people go to their graves never fulfilling their dreams? And so many zero inheritance to their children and grandchildren. Of course, some don't want to leave anything to their loved ones or to the people in the world that need them. I'm referring to those who do, but never form patterns that will help them to do so. Holding on to the old way often smothers the new. So patterns and habits can stop you from acquiring an inheritance for your children and for yourself. There are so many people that die and they have never accomplished what they set out to accomplish because they're still carrying on old baggage and carrying the same old habits. You hear what I'm saying? So habits are very critical, very critical. What do you do the first thing in the morning? What do you do throughout the day? How are you thinking throughout the day, right? Are you talking, sabotaging everything that you are doing in life? Are you sabotaging? Did Holy Spirit tell you to start your business, start your television show, start your radio show, start your media company, and you got all excited about it? Oh, yes, I'm going to do that. I, I'm ready. I'm ready. You even go buy equipment. You get ready to do all these things. And then you allow yourself. It ain't always the devil now. I had a friend and she said to me one time, she said, oh boy, she said it. People blame things on the devil and the devil sitting on the rock crying because he said, I didn't do that. I wish I would have, but I didn't do that. But anyway, are you sabotaging yourself by the things you carry on? Did you buy the equipment, like I just asked, did you buy the equipment or did you start writing the book or did you do all those things and then you told yourself, not the devil, not the Holy Spirit, but you, did you tell yourself, well, um, you know, this is not the right time. I'm too old. I should have did this when I was in my 20s. I should have did it when I was in my 30s. I'm 70 years old now. I still want to do it, but I'm too old. I don't have enough money. I have faith, but I don't have enough money. I have faith. No, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen, but I don't know if this is the right time for me to do that. I, uh, I can't stop this job because, uh, you know, I can't stop this job and stop the start on the business because, you know, I don't know how I'm going to eat. But I have faith. Stop listening to the voice that's always telling you that you are not good enough, you can't do it, whatever it is. You are too old, you are too young, you are not, not like her or him, you didn't finish school, they are privileged, stop it. I wasn't, I'm broke, I'm tired, I, tr I tried this too many times and failed, stop it. Every time that voice rises in your mind, immediately grab it. You hear what I'm saying? Then replace it. Do not give it time to set up a mortgage in your mind. You hear what I'm saying? Replace those thoughts with good thoughts. For example, I'm good enough to do what I need to do. God is good, and he's good all the time. God is faithful. And let's say your faith is shaken. Get back in the word of God. The word of God. The word of God is a manual for life. So when all those little things try to come in your mind and stop you from doing what God has already prepared for you, guess what? You'll be able to move in it. But if you continue 
to let what I just read out of this book, and it's in the first chapter of the book, then you're going to carry those things on and you carry your bag and you won't ever get to the thing that God has for you. That's purpose for you. Remember, God has already, I always tell people this, God has already prepared the thing that he's preparing you for, but you have to believe it. You have to believe it. And the only way you can do that is if you empty that carry-on bag. Because that carry-on bag is also, the thing in that carry-on bag is also going to say, you prayed for that already. You prayed for that year after year. You was praying for that when you was 20 years old. You 60 now. It still have happened. Why you keep praying for it? Why are you trying to do it? You can't do that. I told you over and over you can't do it. Ah, uh, you're praying to the God you know? Well, why you, <laughs> why you still haven't gotten that thing? Why you haven't gotten it started? You've been praying to write a book for all your life, and you still haven't wrote the book. You know why? Because you can't. You're not good enough. You better, ooh, you better find that thing, because that don't belong to you. I'll be right back. Come for any minute. Your faith and inspiration, lady, and I'll be right back with you. In a world that demands your silence, where does your voice find its power? This May 9 through 12, unleash your potential at the Soar Out Loud Content Creator Summit. Hosted by Minister Sister Soldier with special guest, Apostle Fanny Minute. It's a call to action for women ready to transform vision into reality. Join us for a transformative journey of inspiration, networking, and empowerment. I got carried away a few minutes ago because that thing, oh man, I talk to so many people you are. I talk to so many people who still carrying on, still carrying things in their carry-on bag and they cannot move forward. I talk to so many people who have so many dreams, so many gifts, so much inside of them, witty ideas and everything and they never get to it because they carry on things in their carry-on bag and, and they're still living in this pandemic rut. I say, I, I even use the pandemic rut as a metaphor now because it's, it's, it's just with so many lessons we learned from that. But it disappoints me when people have so much inside of them and children have so much inside of them, but they have all these things in their head or in their mind and they just can't move forward, right? Matthew 6, 34, I want to share a couple of scriptures with you. Matthew 6, 34, so do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. <laughs> I get tickled every time I read that scripture because it's like so many of us constantly worried about our past or constantly worried about um, what's going to happen. What if I start this? I talk to people even now in the present right now and they're so worried about the end times and uh, what's going to happen to us next year or what's going to happen in 2025 and what's going to happen in 2030 and they're not living right now. They're not living right now. They have they got a bag there and they pile in some new stuff in their carry-on bag they pile more stuff in their carry-on bag and it just makes you just stop living, right? You stop living, right? And so we don't want you to stop living. We don't want you just waking up, waking up, going to work. Somebody is just waking up. I want to stop because somebody, you, you're just waking up day to day. You're just waking up, you go to work, you come home, you do a little cleaning, you talk on the phone a little bit, you're not living. You're not living. And right now, I want you to start living. Whatever has been on your heart to do, if it's, a, if it's a business, start the business. If it's a new job, find a job you want and get on the new job. Whatever it is, if, you need, if you're thinking about retiring, and in your mind, all you can think about is if I retire, the children don't have me keeping the children every day, and I don't want to keep my grandchildren every day. I just want to enjoy them and see them every now and then. But you thinking I can't retire because I'm going to end up being a permanent babysitter. 
<laughs> That's okay with some of you, but some of you thinking I've got not retire. Somebody's wanting to retire, and you can't retire because you're thinking if I retire, I'm not going to be able to live. Empty those carry-on bags so you can do, so you can hear from the voice of God. You can hear Holy Spirit, and Holy Spirit is in you. Great is he that's in you, and he that is in the world. And the devil, yes, it's a devil. I believe it's a devil. The devil and evil cannot control nothing but the darkness. The devil can't control your light. And so when you shut your light down, that's when you cannot empty that carry-on bag because you are allowing the darkness to control you. And he can't control nothing but the darkness. You hear what I'm saying? You cannot control the light. This is going to have to be a part two, y'all, because I haven't even gotten to the second chapter of the book. <laughs> Purchase the book so you can go. Come up with next week, maybe next week or week after next, you can come along and, 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 and follow me, right? John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Neither let it be afraid. Let not your heart be troubled, and don't allow it to be afraid. God gave us a spirit of love and power and a sound mind, but it's just too many of you not operating in good habits and in, in, in good habits because you're running around fearful. That does not come from the Father in heaven. And those of you who are always talking about, well, God made it happen to me uh, because it, it, he made this happen to me so I could bless people. Get that craziness out of your mind. His promises is for you. It's for you to have good and no evil. Call to action. I have a call to action for you. Speak. Uh, uh, I want you to speak this scriptures over your life out loud. Psalms 23 and 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff. Staff, they comfort me. Did you say it? I need you to say it. Come on, let's say that again. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff comfort me. Did you say that? I'll be right back. I'm Fanny Minute, your faith and inspiration lady. Don't you turn that down, but I'll be right back figure out how to navigate your life stuck in the past of hurt and unforgiveness burdened with bad decision making in a world of confusion you need a fresh perspective and a new outlook on life god destiny and a glass of wine by linda mason crawford just might be the answer get this small easy to read five star book on amazon and see for yourself this book will change your life Okay, if you just tuned in, I'm Fanny Minnick, your faith and inspirational lady. The show is almost over, but you stay there, and then you can you can watch more of the show on YouTube later. Like, yeah, we'll be on YouTube later. But we were, I had a call to action, and I had you speaking these scriptures out loud, because you cannot empty that carry-on bag without God's word. You need his word to empty up the carry-on bag. And so let's finish. Psalms 91 and 11. The one that we recited earlier, if you just tuned into the show, is Psalms 23 and 4. And so this is Psalms 91 and 11. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all thy ways. How do you know that? You have to get in his word. Get in his word so you know what his word, so you can live in his word every day. And in every day, you want to live God's word every day, not some days. John 14, 27, I, I think I said this one earlier, but let's do it again. Peace, because there's so many people without peace. And your habits, what you think and what you do controls your habits. And so many of you are not in peace, so your habits are chaotic because you're not in peace, right? John 14, 27, repeat after me. Peace I leave with you, my peace. I 
give unto you, not as the world give, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Okay, did you repeat that? Thank you. So, every time you start to hear that little boy saying you cannot do this, or you hear that little boy say you're not good enough, you've got to go back to school to get the right skills, or you don't want to go back to school, and if you decide to go back to school, you hear you're too old to go back to school, they won't support me, my family doesn't support me, you don't have enough money uh, to invest in this or, or you, if you don't stop with this energy dream snatcher, I call it an energy dream snatcher, then you will not be able to move forward. Write down, this is another call to action. After this show, I want you to get your pencil and your paper. Write down several things you wanted to accomplish in your life that you haven't done already. Then ask yourself why you haven't reached the finish line concerning the thing that you want and write it down. Set a time of completion and a system on how you will get it done. Set a time of completion and a system. See, a lot of times we set goals, we do things, we empty the carry-on bag, we get started, and we don't have a system of how we're going to complete what it is we're trying to do, and so we just get stuck. So, number one, write down what it is you want to do, and write a date when you want to accomplish it. Right? And so if you want to start your business, write a date and maybe even a year and a month when you want to start that business. Write it down. Right? And so this is part one of it's not about reinventing yourself. It's all about starting the patterns. Nine timeless secrets to help you come out of a pandemic or well, feel free to retire and find your job. This is part one. Father God, in Jesus' name, bless every listener that's listening to the sound of my voice. Give them witty ideas, Father God. Give them the power to give well. I am Fanny Minute, your faith and inspirational lady. And I want to say to you, empty that carry-on bag. Start some good habits. Just have faith and keep it moving.